So you might be curious as to what does a soldier carry on them on a day-to-day -day basis, whether they're deployed or not deployed. Well then, stick around. What's up, my friends? Welcome to an all new video. I'm US Army veteran Christopher Chaos, and in today's episode, we're talking about some everyday carry items for soldiers, whether they are in garrison or otherwise not deployed, or maybe in a combat zone. So that's what we're gonna be talking about in today's video. Before we start that, though, special thanks to the Ridge Wallet for sponsoring this video. The Ridge Wallet is light, sleek, very modern looking, doesn't fold or create any kind of bulge in your back pocket. You can easily just throw this in your front pocket and make it a lot easier to carry around your wallet and all your ID and cards and everything. It can hold up to 12 cards inside of here to include room for some cash on the back with either a money clip or a band. With over 30 colors to choose from to include carbon fiber and burnt titanium, I actually enjoy rocking the camouflage colored one, but you can choose the one that best suits your style. Now, if you're rough on wallets or just things in general, don't worry, this thing's made of a very durable material that also includes RFID blocking technology and is also backed by a lifetime warranty. You could easily just buy one wallet and be set for the rest of your life. Now, the people over at Ridge are so confident that you will love the Ridge wallet so much that they will allow you to test drive it for 45 days. If you don't love the Ridge wallet, then you can simply return it and get a full money back return. So get free worldwide shipping even on returns when you visit ridge.com slash chaos army and also use the promo code chaos army to get 10% off at checkout. So check out the link down in the description box down below to get rid of that old school wallet, get yourself something stylish and modern, get yourself a Ridge wallet. So let's kick this off and let's talk about some everyday carry items that a soldier might carry, starting off when they're not deployed, just simply in garrison. First one, well, convenient enough because of the sponsor, right? A wallet, right? You gotta have a wallet. You gotta have something to carry, especially like your ID card in, your debit card. Sometimes you have like little battle buddy cards or other types of things that your unit creates that has like maybe some kind of, you know, things to do in a situation that they want you to carry on you. So you're gonna need something to carry that ID card around everything else, right? Because you know the sponsor, you know, obviously this is a good choice as well, especially because like in the army uniform, right? You can simply put this in one of those side pockets, maybe on the sleeve, maybe in the front or whatever. It's very small enough to easily fit there without you know being in your back pocket and worry about it falling out when you're moving around underneath a vehicle or something like that. So, you know, definitely because it's sponsored, but also because it is just easy to carry around. A ridge wallet could be very good for that, but you know, your choice on how you kind of prefer to carry around your ID card and everything, but you need something, right, to carry it around. Might as well be the sponsored, you know, item for this video, a Ridge wallet maybe. Another very key thing is a pen and paper, right? You have actually on your uniform a little spot for pens. Usually you don't want anything too crazy and excessive. Usually you gotta have it somewhat hidden. If you have like the standard issue government pens that are black and everything like that, then those are kind of a little bit concealed and those are okay. You're gonna stick in your pocket in general. Uh, you don't wanna have anything too bulky or something too bright and colorful or whatever sticking out of that pen pocket or whatever. So a pen and maybe like a small notebook is usually ideal to carry around with you. A lot of times that's something that you know they're gonna ask for. Like, all right, let's see, you, you got a pen and paper, let me see it, break it out. Especially like to put down information. You're doing like a formation, you're doing some kind of thing at the end of the day to put out what's going on the next day, you know, and as you're all huddled around, a lot of times they're gonna be like, all right, where's your pen and paper? You know, start writing this stuff down. Also kind of in line with the sponsor, right? They also sent me like a pen. They have that cool pen. It's like a called a space pen that I attach to my keys and everything. And it's like really great because you can like write upside down or sideways underwater. I don't know when you'd need to write underwater, but I like it because there's often times where I have to like fill out some forms and maybe have it up against a wall and I write here. And this kind of helps with those kind of situations because sometimes with a regular ink pen, you're trying to write while you're standing up or whatever, especially like maybe you're doing PMCS in the motor pool to fill out paperwork for the vehicle. And eventually the ink kind of starts to flow backwards a little bit and it kind of makes it a problem. You have to kind of like get the ink to come back down and kind of write vertically down this way or whatever. But these kind of pens are really great. You can check out the Ridge pen that they have on there called a space pen. That might help you a lot. And maybe in a rainy situation or just a situation where you're standing up and writing, you don't have to worry about the ink kind of flowing backwards, but you need some kind of reliable pen. It's good to have. My theory on pens is that uh, it's good to have a really good quality pen, maybe something that's a little bit, you know, not a cheap pen or something a little bit more expensive because you're more likely to keep track of that pen than if you had some cheap pen that you don't care about and you're gonna lose your pen all the time. You're gonna be like constantly having to borrow a pen from somebody. But when you have a pen that's actually kind of, you know, a little bit maybe of a better material, something that's a little bit more valuable, something that costs you a little bit, you know, to, to spend on it, you're probably gonna be more responsible to take care of that pen and keep track of it. So I, I a lot of times recommend, you know, getting something a little bit better quality than just your average pen just to you know maybe have that accountability and keep track of your pen a little bit better hopefully 
As far as paper goes, you can get these little notepads. A lot of times they carry around in their, their little pouch pockets or whatever, maybe their front pockets, side pockets, whatever the case might be. But you usually wanna have some kind of little kind of pad of paper to be able to write on. So when you have to write down some information, it's very easy and convenient to pull that pad of paper out and write on it. A lot of times they promote like, you know, waterproof paper. They have those, they make them. I don't think I've ever had a situation where I needed to write in the rain and it was that important, but they're good. Sometimes they're kind of a little bit hard to write on sometimes, but you know, sure, if you want a waterproof, you know, notepad, then that might be great. But sometimes they're kind of, you know, awkward to try to write on. And I don't think I've ever had a situation where I needed to really write something down that important in the rain. Next up, you're probably gonna need like a multi-tool or at least a knife. They're very convenient, especially depending on your MOS and what you're gonna do. A lot of times you just need it maybe just to, to cut some string off of something or to maybe get into your MRE because sometimes the little pouches are a pain in the ass to get open or a multi-tool is great for a lot of different things for like the pliers and different things, you know, working on vehicles around with your weapon or something, right? A lot of times you're issued a multi-tool. Sometimes that's either in the form of the brand Leatherman or the Gerber brand, uh, but usually some sort of multi-tool a lot of times will get issued through your supply. But if not, then it's good just to invest in one that you like, one that you feel is a good quality multi-tool or pick up some kind of pocket knife that you can maybe, you know, put in your pocket, clip to your belt, you know, that's kind of hidden and out of the way. But those are very great to have and come in handy in a lot of situations. Next up, a watch, right? It could be a fancy watch, probably at least at a minimum, some kind of cheapo watch at least, but a watch is good. A lot of people maybe check their, the time on their phone or whatever, but there's gonna be some situations where you can't have your phone with you or it's not convenient to pull out your phone to check the time or whatever. So having a watch, whether that's a smart watch or just a cheap $5 digital or analog watch, something to be able to keep track of time. Being on time to things is very key in the military, right? So you have to know what the time is to make sure that you're on time. And in some situations, it's very easy and convenient to just simply have that on your wrist. You're working on something, you're doing some things, you can quickly take a glance, see what time it is, get back to doing what you're doing, rather than having to dig into your pocket, pull your phone out, look at the time, put it back in your pocket, and then continue doing what you're doing. So I recommend a watch, you know, whether it's a nice, fancy, you know, smartwatch or something just cheap and digital and analog, whatever the case might be. And the fifth everyday carry item, at least for Garrison, is going to be probably your cell phone. I mean, that may seem kind of crazy, especially if you're an old school veteran or something like that, but with the current day military and the world we live in, a cell phone is, is pretty needed. There's no army regulation or anything that says you must have a cell phone or whatever, but it definitely saves you a lot of headache and, and, and everything if you just have that cell phone so that you're easily reachable. You know, some people may not want to have that leash attached to them or whatever, but trust me, you know, having that, yes, you may not like that. You may not like that, you know, you're easy to, to be able to get in contact with, but if you're not easy to get in contact with, you're gonna hate that a lot more. Because if you're someone that is very hard to get in touch with when they need to, then they're probably gonna stick you somewhere as easy convenient. They're gonna make you, you know, be in the motor pool all the time, be supervised, be in the office, whatever the case is, so that, you know, they can keep track of you. And then other people have cell phones that they can easily reach. You know, you might have some down days where they're like, hey, go ahead and go chill out in the barracks. If I need you, I'll give you a call. Well, if you don't have a cell phone, they can't call you. Well, then you're probably not gonna get that luxury of getting to go chill out or something like that. That's not like an everyday thing, but you know, that happens from time to time, whatever. So having that cell phone with you is good for them to be able to reach you, for you to be able to reach them as well. So not just for them to be able to reach you, but there's often times where you need to get hold of other people in your squad, your platoon, whatever the case is. You know, you need help with something and you don't know where the hell private so-and-so is or whatever, so you give them a call. You're like, hey, I need you down here to, to give me a hand. And it's easy and convenient to get a hold of them that way. Also with current day technology and everything of cell phones, right? You have Google at the palm of your hands to be able to look for something up. You know, you're trying to figure out how to do something, you look it up. Maybe you need the, the Julian date for those of you that maybe use that kind of a thing. Maybe you need Zulu time, you know, a lot of different kind of situations where it's just a computer at the palm of your hand. So you need to look something up, you got it right there. It's very convenient to help you out in that manner. So those are five like everyday carry items in garrison when you're not deployed that most commonly pretty much every soldier is going to have on them for the most part. Maybe the exception of the knife or the multi-tool maybe kind of vary here and there, but a lot of those other items is pretty much almost guaranteed that a soldier is going to have that in some form or fashion. So now let's kind of transition over to the combat side. Now, a lot of those items, pretty much all, probably four out of five of those items transition over to the combat side, probably the exception of that cell phone, right? You probably don't necessarily in all situations have a cell phone with you on a combat deployment. Maybe you do, maybe you don't, most people don't though, but those other four items probably transfer over for a combat situation as well. So let's talk about what additionally of those items you will also probably have to carry on you when you're in a combat zone. First one, of course, being your weapon. That is probably given, probably one you expected me to mention, your weapon. 
You don't carry a weapon around in garrison. It's not an all everyday kind of carry thing all the time. Only when you're deployed, maybe in the field environment, those kind of situations, you'll have your weapon carried with you at all times. So that means you're going to dinner chow, breakfast chow, whatever the case is, just wandering around the base or whatever, you're carrying your weapon with you. You don't like to lock it up, nothing like that. No, that thing goes with you everywhere. It's in your room, your tent, whatever your kind of sleeping conditions are, that thing is with you everywhere you go. To the showers, sometimes people would like have them watch their weapon while they go to the shower, but some people would bring that with them. You know, that one kind of just depends on leadership as far as how they kind of regulate that. But everywhere else, your weapon goes with you at all times. Kind of along with carrying the weapon, usually if you're not out on mission, you're just simply roaming around the fob, the, the cop, whatever, the base that you're kind of at, whatever, you have to have at least one magazine of ammunition. So you only really have like the full combat load when you're going out on mission. You have the vest on, you got all your magazines inside all the pouches, but if you're not out on mission, you're just roaming around on the fob or whatever the case is, then you just have one magazine that sometimes goes in like maybe one of those little pockets that you have on the pant leg of the pants. Uh, maybe some people would get like this little pouch that attaches to the weapon and it can stick the magazine inside that pouch that's kind of attached to like the butt stock of the weapon. That was pretty common, I think I had that. Or sometimes if I didn't have that on my weapon, I would just put it in the, the lower pocket of my pant leg. But at all times, soldiers carrying around at least one magazine at a minimum. Another very common one was a tourniquet. You actually had a little small little tourniquet that came in a little packaging or whatever, maybe it was out of the packaging, whatever the case was, depending on kind of the style of tourniquet that you got, that had to be carried on you at all times as well. That usually went in one of those lower pockets or maybe up in the, the shoulder pocket, whatever the case was, we had to carry a tourniquet with you at all times. That way, if there was a situation that something happened, maybe a mortar, even on, on FOB, right? It didn't matter if you were off on mission or just simply on the FOB, if like a mortar attack happened and something happened and you needed to get a tourniquet applied to you, they're supposed to use that soldier's tourniquet and they're supposed to be on them. So you find that either in the pant leg or on their you know shoulder pocket or whatever and pull that out and apply the tourniquet to that soldier to try to treat them. Just in case you don't know what a tourniquet is, it's basically like a band that tightens really, really tightly, right? To kind of cut off the circulation to the blood flow to keep it from, you know, bleeding out. So if like you got a really bad wound on the arm or your arm got cut off or blown off or whatever the case was, you apply a tourniquet above the wound and it stops the bleeding so that way you hopefully don't bleed out and you can get treatment. Typically in those situations, you're supposed to use the soldier's tourniquet. So if they had a situation like that, you grab their tourniquet out of their pocket, apply it to them. That way you keep yours for yourself. But sometimes you might have a situation where maybe that soldier kept that tourniquet in their, you know, that bottom pocket on their on their pant leg or whatever, but their leg got blown off. Well, then that tourniquet's gone somewhere and now you have to use yours. So, you know, you gotta save their life somehow. So you have to use theirs. So if available, you would always use their tourniquet and then save yours for yourself if you needed to use one. Another very common everyday carry item that sounds kind of a little crazy, a little ridiculous, but it was a PT belt. Especially a lot of units, you know, this might even be an every unit kind of a thing, but a lot of units had the policy if you're walking around on the fob at night, you had to wear a PT belt. That way you're easily visible to other people walking around, vehicles, whatever, when Humvees or, you know, civilian trucks are moving around on that fob, whatever, then hopefully they could see you very easily with that reflection from the reflection belt. Now, while on mission, you don't wear a reflective belt out on mission because you're not trying to make yourself obviously stand out while on a mission. But on the FOB, usually that was a requirement for a lot of units that you had to have a PT belt with you. So that way, when it got dark out that at a certain time, you know, it was a requirement to wear a PT belt. Talked about this before, but I knew a lot of people, they would always, always forget their PT belt back in their room and their tent or their vehicle or whatever the case was. And they wanted to go get dinner chow and they're like, oh crap, I don't know where my PT belt's at. Hey, can you grab me a to-go plate? I don't know where my PT belt's at because they go out there without their PT belt and someone higher ranking sees them without their PT belt on, they're going to get an ass chewing. Now the fifth and last one that I'll mention for a combat situation that you have to carry with you is going to be your eye protection and kind of along with that, maybe some gloves in some cases. So especially like I remember both my deployments when I was deployed to Iraq, both times I had to have eye pro and even gloves in most cases as well. Eye Pro is a definite, one, a definite one that's usually pretty common for all units. The gloves one, that one kind of varies from unit to unit really but it's having some kind of eye protection. I mean, that's even more than just my simple regular glasses. I usually had to have some kind of ballistic eyewear that either I had inserts inside some ballistic eyewear or I would just simply just say screw it and put the ballistic eyewear over my regular glasses because they would fit over them just fine and I would just rock that way, I guess. But whatever the case was, in most cases for a lot of units, they even if you're on mission or not on mission and you're just walking around the fob, you had to at least have eye protection on. So everybody's walking around with eye protection, either they're tinted or they're just clear lenses or they're the polar lenses, which is kind of like a yellowish tint kind of to them, whatever the case was, you had eye protection on at all times. 
Then while on my second deployment with that, when I was with 4th Infantry Division, they required you to also wear gloves. So you had to walk around with gloves on. There were these Nomex gloves or these fire resistant gloves to just in case, I guess, maybe a mortar attack or whatever, then you at least had some kind of protection from your hands to protect you from burns or whatever the case was. There were a lot of units that didn't do the glove thing while on FOB, they only required it when you went outside the wire. So sometimes people give you looks like, why the hell are you wearing gloves? It's like 118 degrees outside and you're working around wearing gloves. And it'd be like a thing, well, our unit requires this even while we're on the FOB. So that one will definitely vary from unit to unit. I know like when I was 30 CR, I don't believe it was a requirement to wear gloves when you're on the FOB, but it was once you went left the wire and went out on mission. But the iPro part is usually a part of that. So that one is, is a, more common one, that one's probably gonna be a given that you're gonna have to wear some kind of eye protection even while you're walking around on the FOB. So those are just some items that I wanted to highlight both on the garrison side when you're not deployed, plus also while you're deployed that commonly a soldier is going to have on them at all times, your everyday carry items. For those viewers out there that are currently in the military, maybe some veterans out there, I'd love to hear down in the comment section down below, what are some everyday carry items that you had to carry with you at all times that were just must haves that were very useful to you, whether you were deployed or not deployed. And then for those of you that maybe are not yet in the military or maybe just curious about some things, maybe leave some comments down in the comment section as well about maybe things you're just curious about. Maybe, hey, would this be helpful or would that be helpful? Whatever the case might be, drop me some comments down below. What do you guys think? Now, if you enjoyed this video, maybe think about sharing it with some other people that could find it helpful and very useful at the least. Hit that thumbs up for me. I greatly appreciate it. Check out links down in the description for social media. Also, the Ridge Wallet link down below to get yourself a Ridge Wallet. Thank you so much for hanging out. Thanks for watching. I'm Christopher Chaos, and I'll see you next time. See you.